the morning markets kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we have a mixed market, pretty calm action so far this morning. We get initial jobless claims, that number pretty much in line, a slight uptick from last week. Why not? Let's jump over to the headline number we get at 8.30 this morning. That number, 353,000 initial unemployment claims in state programs, up 4,000 from the prior week. So we were at 349 the prior week. Economists were we're looking for about 350. You're talking about a thousand jobs here or there, pretty much in line with what we're talking about. Continuing claims falling slightly to 2.9 million. Taking a look at that on a graph when you check out where we are, we also have some GDP numbers in terms of initial jobless claims. And you see, kind of just stuck at this 350,000 number. We talked to Kevin Hakes coming up at 915, as he's pointed out many times in a healthy economy, you're talking about at least 200 to 250,000 jobs on an initial unemployment claim on a weekly basis that's a healthy economy so we're still above that by about a hundred thousand jobs but in the context of the jobs that we're supposedly going to make up you're talking about eight to nine to ten million jobs basically to get back to the pre-pandemic numbers uh one, two, three, four thousand numbers not going to make a big difference on initial jobless claims number we got gdp this number as well Gross domestic product, 6.6% annualized pace in the second quarter. That's the second estimate released by the Commerce Department. The initial estimate was 6.5, so a slight uptick. The market was actually looking for 6.7, though, so a little bit of a miss there. Nonetheless, pretty small numbers. We talked about continuing claims. There's your continuing claims number. All right, that decreasing as well. We're now sitting at 2.7 million. Uh, are we? Um no, we're sitting at 2.86 million, okay? And we dropped 3,000. That's basically dropping like nothing, right? Now, the number that I always take a look at, the total of those receiving benefits across all government programs rose to just above 12 million, according to the data through August 7th. Now, the, the, the governmental data goes all the way back to August 7th. When you're talking about the continuing claims, I believe that's gonna be a week delayed among initial claims, which is the most recent data that we get in here. Pretty strong numbers in here, pretty much in line with what the market's looking for. A little bit of volatility to the downside, though. That's why I talk about the numbers. We bring it up. You're only talking about four or five S&P points, but you see a little negative action there as well. We got Jackson Hole starting as well today. Chairman Powell, the main event tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We already got some Fed speak out there out there this morning, though. We'll check that out in a little bit. Jumping over to Bitcoin, down about 1,700 bucks on the session. We were above 50,000 to start the week. We're trading at 47,030. Crude, negative 67 cents, made it to a high of 68.54 in crude. Talk about some volatility, almost $7 from where we were Sunday night in crude to the highs we had yesterday. Gold contract, giving back some of the recent gains. Gold trading lower this morning. You see the volatility on that 830 number as well. Gold comes into that initial jobless claims number at 1790. We're trading at 1783. Silver's down 26 cents at 23.51, and we jumped to notes and bonds this morning. We got a little bit of lower price and higher yield coming into Jackson Hole virtual event. We're talking about a yield right now, 1.37%. It's been quite a move this week. You back it up to Sunday night, we were trading above 134. We just hit 133.12. We take a look at a daily. And you see a little bit of a reversal. We're coming right down to the lows we had about two weeks ago. That low. On August 11th, you're talking about a low of 133.09. You're about four ticks away from that low right now. And you see, we had about four days there where we built a little bit of a low, kind of right where we're at right now. Interesting to see how this is going to trade today and tomorrow with Chairman Powell coming up tomorrow. All right, what else we got going on? Why not? We'll start it off with a little Fed speak. Fed's Esther George. So she is out there saying it's time to start easing off on the policy juice. Now, everyone's talking about Chairman Powell, of course, but you can't. there's going to be more than Chairman Powell speaking tomorrow. Kansas City Fed President Esther George says it's time for the central bank to start dialing back its policy stimulus. I'll be ready to talk about taper sooner rather than later in the CNBC interview. She's out there. Uh, first up, for the Fed will be reducing the price of its monthly asset purchases, as we're all somewhat aware of the talk about that. Uh, nonetheless, you got that out there. Um, 
George said the, prog the progress in the jobs market, as well as the sustained run higher in inflation, show her that the Fed can begin to back off the crisis era measures it has taken. She makes a reasonable argument, folks. At some point, the punch bowl is going to have to get pulled away. Uh, you could make a very reasonable argument that the economy is firing on all cylinders now. Maybe the Fed should not be in there firing as much to the tune of $120 billion on a monthly basis that they're buying excuse me, treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. Um, when you look at the job gains we saw last month, the month before, you look at the level of inflation right now, I think it would suggest that the level of accommodation we're providing right now is probably not needed in this scenario. So I would be ready to talk about the taper sooner rather than later. And she is speaking as part of the Fed's annual Jackson Hole Conference, which the Kansas City Fed hosts and uh, as they had to do in the last minute because of the Delta variant and COVID cases, they are doing it virtually. Um, and as they talk about reducing 120 billion. So you may see some headlines today and tomorrow. Main event's gonna be tomorrow. And as many people are saying, I would expect the same. You're not gonna hear Chairman Powell saying this. That's, you're not gonna hear him saying sooner rather than later. You're not gonna see him, hear him saying, I'd be ready to talk about the taper sooner rather than later. That is not what he's gonna be saying out there tomorrow. Uh, in my opinion, but we're going to find out in about 25 hours from right now, 10 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Already some headlines coming out there um, with the Fed. Markets off a bit. You got the S&P negative by four. All things in context. We're right now about 10 points away from all time highs in the index. Excuse me. Jumping around tech stocks, a little bit of a pullback. Again, all things in context, folks. You're trading at 15,327 in the NASDAQ 100. Dow is barely positive today by about 40 points. We have Salesforce higher on their earnings last night. Salesforce is a Dow component, so that's going to put a bid there. We'll jump over to Salesforce real quick. Excuse me. And we do have some Salesforce in my newsletter, folks. Rocket Equities and Options. If you'd like to check it out, the front page, TFNN, under the newsletter tab. Every newsletter we do, folks, 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, and this is, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of a dry throat, still getting over a little bit of a cold. Uh, there is your action on Salesforce numbers. We'll pull this up a little bit later in the show, but they come out with their numbers last night. Strong numbers as they're integrating Slack into their business. Uh, you had their CEO on Mad Money last night. Interesting. Anytime you see a CEO that's already got a whole lineup of marquee press appearances following their earnings event, sometimes that's going to be damage control. Okay, so you can't be guaranteed, but they're going to be in good numbers. But they may not be booking themselves on mad money if they're going to come out with a horrific quarter. They might be, okay? They might just be out there doing damage control. The CEO, Marc Benoit, I think Benoit, um, he is a big proponent. He's out there. He's not afraid to be out there promoting that company. So he could have. But when I heard that, I said, you know what? They're probably going to come in with pretty strong numbers. And they sure did. He was out there on mad money last night talking about it. So you got Salesforce up almost, what is that, 4% about this morning. That's going to put a bid on the Dow. You got the Dow up 37 points. And you got the Russell right now negative by about four points. Checking out the VIX. As we come into about 15 minutes till the opening bell, VIX trading at about 1746 right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back after the break. We got the S&Ps negative by four. We're going to be talking to our man, Kevin Hanks. We'll be talking options. We'll be talking defined risk. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers defy the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. 
Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps. We're negative by four points right now. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. Some pretty tame action, but not tame action on the earnings front. We got some movers, man, today. How about William Sonova over there? WSM. They closed yesterday at 170. You're going to open at almost 200 in a big way. You had Alta with their numbers last night from 389. We're up about $20 on that stock as well. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 11 a.m. Eastern time on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market with Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, and the team breaking down the day's market action, walking you through what's going on for the trading action of the day, setting up hypothetical trades. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, today starts uh, Jackson Hole Conference, and I believe that this market is going to hang on every word that these guys say. You already saw that around 735 this morning when James Bullard, the president of the St. Louis Fed, made some hawkish comments. Now, full disclosure, he is a well-known hawk, so the fact that he would make a hawkish comment isn't really a surprise, but the futures did sell off briefly and now are slowly making their way back. But, you know, this is going to be one of those days. It's like when you get on the roller coaster, they say, buckle up, keep your hands inside. It's going to be one of those days. I think we're going to hang on all these comments, whether they make headlines or not, Tommy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I saw, I believe it was Esther George out there as well with some pretty yep. hawkish comments saying sooner Too rather than later. Well. I said, um, in my opinion, you're probably not going to hear Chairman Powell uttering those words tomorrow. But as you say, man, we're going to get some words today. We're going to get a constant kind of news flow. We'll see how the market reacts to it. Um, some some big numbers, Kevin, on the retail front, man. We talked about it yesterday, right, with Dix. Some of these companies, man, William Sonoma, how about it, Kevin? It makes sense in terms of the 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 talk about redoing the house, right? Um, William yep. Sonoma, high-end retailer for household goods. But what a move on some of these equities, Kevin. Um, up up almost to 200. You're talking about a stock that's going to open $30 higher from 17300 and Alta Beauty with some pretty strong numbers as well, up $20 this morning. Um, retailers, man, we're separating winners from losers. And there are some big winners going on right now in this market, Kevin, on the retail sector. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, normally retail is a pretty volatile, er, you know, section of earnings season. And lately, you know, retail has been had some problems, you know, in the past. But boy, the last couple quarters, retail is just screaming. Look at the recovery. Look at the chart. 
of Ulta and where it got yeah. down to during the pandemic and where it is now. That's, you know, we featured it yesterday on, on Fast Market, and it's amazing. You know, and their uh, partnership with Target is just a – it's not a single or a double. It's a home run for them. So – there is nothing but good news in Ulta, and though I do not claim to be a makeup um, <laughs> expert, it's certainly I can appreciate a good product being sold in the in, in the right place, and I think that partnership is a really good one. And I could appreciate a good chart, man, that goes from 125 at the COVID lows to over 400 this morning, man. Yeah. And you make, you make a great point, Kevin. Um, yeah, so they're going to have the shops within shops, right? They're going to have um, Ulta, right. maybe in Target. What was so cool, I saw, you know, innovation. You always got to be innovation, folks. If you're not growing, you're shrinking, right? Um, Macy's, I thought, was so cool, Kevin, just kind of in line. They're going to have Toys R Us, right? They're going to have like 400 Toys yep. R Uses within Macy's. Really cool how some of these retailers, and you talked about it, um, malls might be around but they're going to be around in a different fashion than what we we're used to where a retailer like macy's could just pay for the square footage um and i'm throwing my bias in here you know but just just to put jeans and clothing around that type of square footage and compete now they're going to have toys r us stores in there they're going to have other retailers you know stores within stores we bring people in to the store and then maybe you capitalize on that and you're seeing it in the same way man target target is just quite a stock indeed um i love the way you guys always talk to like folio on the program always amusing when you bring Target into it, because I agree with you, man. It is remarkable the brand that Target has put together, and uh, they're a love company, man. It's pretty, pretty cool how that works out, and uh, the stock showing it in a big way. So, of course, Kevin, we got the Fed going on today. We'll keep our eye on that. We got some earnings coming out as well. We had the dollar stocks out there with their numbers, Alta, Target. There's a lot on the plate. We got Chairman Powell coming up tomorrow. What are you guys going to be talking about coming up at 11 o'clock today? Obviously, our feature stock today will be Peloton, but we've also got Workday. We've got Gap. So uh, more retail to look at, but also a little HR and a little exercise today. Peloton, Workday, and Gap. Peloton is quite an interesting one, man. You talk about some volatility, right? We go from 17 bucks at the lows of COVID. You trade up almost a 10-bagger to 171 in early January. And then the market says, ah, maybe we got a little bit ahead of itself. And you do almost an exact 50% retracement, Kevin, to 78. What's our low there going back to May? 70, uh, 81, 80, 48. We make it to from 171. We're back to about 116 today. Talk about being in the right place place at the right time timing folks sometimes is everything this stock i remember it goes public kevin and the whole world said wait a second you're selling bikes at how much 1800 bucks 2200 bucks with a subscription to go with it i'm not sure that's going to work out and then the whole world shuts down and the stock takes off uh interesting nonetheless that one is always compounding kevin i'll be interesting to see what you guys have to talk about because what i can't get right is where's the competition for for a stationary bike that's selling over twenty two hundred dollars and they got a great product man i love to ride a bicycle but that's a lot of money to be paying when you got to pay a subscription fee on top of it right can you give us a little teaser of your take on pelt because that's i try and wrap my brain around that kevin as a consumer right if it's worth it it's worth it folks your health is worth more than anything else in the world so if you make use of it that's a great deal but that where's the comp where's the amazon bike remember the amazon bike that they thought was going to come out what do you what do you give us a little teaser of your take on peloton well here, here's the thing about peloton number one in terms of peloton the quality of their bike is the best right then it's the infrastructure and it's the uh world that peloton is i i know more people that love the peloton app just for the workout that don't even have the bike but still use the Peloton app. And then they're coming out with a new treadmill. And get yeah. ready, they're coming out with a rowing machine, too. I saw so that, they too. keep expanding. So what makes Peloton attractive and makes me watch it is the pipeline. They keep innovating and keep changing. And it couldn't come at a better time. You're right, Tommy, because cool. more and more people are working out at home than ever before. And they do it where you get you 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 pay off the bike interest free through a company called a firm and and that's how they do it and they it, it's not twenty four hundred dollars it's about sixty bucks a month which is less than your um it's it's less than your health club membership sure. so they make it affordable and they've got a pipeline Tommy. It's pretty cool, man. And like I said, I mean, it's expensive, but folks, it's not expensive if you use it. 
stay healthy out there, whatever you can do to be active. So that's the bottom line. And like you said, man, timing, man, you lock it down. I haven't been to a, a gym, Kevin, um, and I'm still paying for my LA fitness membership. I'm not sure why for the last 16 months should have put it on hold. Um, but the world is changing, man. And I'm not sure I'm going to be um, back in that gym as often as I even was prior to COVID, just as I enjoy being outside, man. I started running outside a little bit more, walking a little bit more, biking a little bit more myself. We're fortunate in Florida, we can be outside 12 months a year. If I was up in the Northeast, if I was up in windy Chicago, I might have to get myself a Peloton to lock it down. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the conversation and the education as always. We'll be watching at 11 o'clock today, man. You have yourself a great day. Have a great weekend as well. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great weekend. My pleasure, as always, Kevin. Folks, tune in 11 o'clock every trading day on Tiger TV, Fast Market by the TD Ameritrade Network. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, the whole team. They got, like, folio over there. They break down the day's action. Outstanding program. Check it out today at 11 o'clock. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with the market open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back.
back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps negative by about three points. I mean, look at the action we've had since the end of Monday. Talk about a low volatility zone right now. You're talking about since the close of Monday, we were trading at 44.80. You did climb at the end of the day yesterday to almost 4,500 in the futures. We make it to 44.98. We're trading at 44.89. The whole week, though, you're talking about basically a 20-point trading range, including yesterday's high, sitting right in the middle of that area at 44.89. We get the Dow up a bit. We got Salesforce trading higher in a big way on their earnings. Salesforce accelerating higher. We're up 3.9%. We'll call it 4% up $10 on their numbers. Accelerating higher on the open. That is going to put a bid in the Dow. The Dow, you're only talking about um, 30 stocks, and it's a price weighted index, which means a $272 stock is going to have an impact in that Dow as it accelerates higher, up now 4.6%. Jumping into Salesforce numbers. Talking about $1.48 a share versus $0.92. Cents. Revenue top forecast as well. Upbeat outlook as company continues to shift applications in the cloud. I watched uh, the interview he did on Mad Money there. Nothing too dramatic. I mean, he's quite a promoter in a big way, as you should be, of CEO of quite a company over there at Salesforce, a Dow company now as well. Uh, but strong numbers from Salesforce. And you're talking about a high there. You put this thing. On a weekly, you're talking about 284.50, the high, remarkable. You're talking about a year ago, right? Four quarters ago, they came out. And I remember listening to this earnings call back then. We were not in Salesforce just yet. Um, I remember listening to this earnings call back then, and it was almost every single analyst was blown away when they came out August in terms of the numbers and the margins and the growth they had done. But guess what? They didn't quite live it up to it because the next quarter uh, they had some volatility. And then I believe they talked about buying Slack not long after that. The market really wasn't too thrilled buying Slack for some crazy multiple $27 billion or something like that. Um, nonetheless, you can see the move as it makes it way its way back up. Now, what I've been talking about in my newsletter, give me a little teaser here, is that we're looking at an A to B, C to D here. You're talking about an A point of 208, a B point of 253. We accelerate above that area last week, and look at how we're plying, plowing above that area. Now, that would give you, if you're A to B, C to D, you're talking about a D projection of about 279. Now, it's interesting there, 279, you're going to be bumping up against the highs in terms of 284.50. Seems like the logical next step for this chart when you look at where we are right now at 271.28 for Salesforce. And again, that's the reason why you're probably catching the Dow in positive territory, all the major other indices in the red right now. All right, jumping around to other equities with earnings today, the dollar store has got their numbers out, not quite living up to expectations. We'll start off with Dollar Tree. Quite the short-lived pop last night on their numbers. They are negative to the tune of 9% right now. We'll jump over to Dollar General as well. They're negative by 6% right now. Both of them trading lower on their numbers. And getting into the numbers, Dollar General, they beat by 10 cents, okay? So 269, revenue slightly above forecast. Comp store sales fell 4.7%, less than the 5.1% the drop was looking for. However, they forecasted a lower than expected earnings for the full year. That's not what the market likes to see. Dollar Tree, they are lower as well as they say. Mixed quarter revenue showed a forecast. Dollar 23 beat the consensus estimate. But you can't be making more money when you're taking in less money. The market wants to see revenue, folks, in a big way. Jumping down the line, J.M. Smucker. I believe they're lower this morning. SJM, $1.90 a share, four cents above estimates. Revenue slightly there as well, but they cut the full year forecast. We've talked about this with Kevin Hanks, right? In the current quarter that they're reporting for, or I should say the last quarter that they are reporting for, kind of the quarter of record that they're reporting their numbers for, strong numbers almost across the board. The only worry is forecast waning a bit you see it with a little bit i mean the companies that are really missing the only thing they're missing on is the forecast a lot of them are beating on earnings they're beating on revenue um not all of them but the forecast is the dicey one maybe they're talking about uh some problems with margins maybe they're talking about supply chains in there maybe they're talking about um the ability to secure their products that they have to sell etc hurting them in the next year so they're smuckers they're down about 3.5 percent we have abercrombie they're lower today as well. Revenue below forecast, not what the market likes to see. Adjusted profit of $1.70 share. Market was looking for 77 cents, so they're making more money than the market thought, but they're doing it on less revenue. Not what you like to see for the future of a company. And there you're seeing the pain down 9.8%. And what's happening here is if you've got Abercrombie struggling like that, you got a company like Dix coming out saying that they're 45% above where they were two years ago. I think that was the number, folks, 45% versus on a two-year basis. I love the comparisons on a two-year basis to bring you back to a world that was a little bit more normal. 
two years ago, because a year ago, the comps are just crazy. Some companies, the comps are unfairly high. Sometimes the comp comps are unfairly low. You, I mean, Dix was still above their comps from a year ago when they were accelerating higher already, and they're 45% above two years ago. You compare it to a company like Abercrombie that's struggling, can't even meet their forecast on revenue, yeah, you're going to pay a price over there. Alta, we talked about trading higher as well. They doubled basically the, the profit estimate. They come in at 456 versus 259. Revenue beats as well, and they raise the full year outlook on overall improvement. And the beauty industry continues. People are getting back out, and they are putting on some of that makeup. But guess what? Market says, hold on a second on the open. Interesting action. Always interesting when you get this type of a move. Volume comes into the equity, and they find out, guess what? Not quite as rosy as we thought. And look at that, folks. I mean, look at the, the number they had, right? You're talking about, excuse me, you're talking about um, a double beat on earnings, a beat on revenue, and a raise of the outlook, and the stock barely is positive on the open. Now, all things in context, there's your three-year weekly. Okay, you want to talk about some lofty expectations on an equity that runs from 125 to over 415 on the open. You want to talk about an equity that was trading at 300 coming into COVID and you're trading at almost 400 now. That's the reason why expectations are everything sometimes as you trade lower. And we might even be in the red, folks, on Ulta with some strong, strong numbers coming into the open there. Excuse me. Okay, continuing to jump down the line for equities moving. Yeah, William Sonoma just staggering numbers here in a big way. So to talk about, we talk, let's see how they're trading, because this is just a, a mammoth beat in a big way on earnings. Uh, they are holding on to the gains, up 15.4% this morning. Uh, topping the bottom, uh, f excuse me, following a top and bottom line beat, as well as raise the outlook and a 20% dividend e increase. Uh, quarterly profit of 324 versus 261. Uh, big numbers across the board in a big way. All right, what else we got going on here? Box, beat estimates by two cents, quarterly profit of 21. They're a cloud company. Uh, revenue slightly above forecast. Raise the full year guidance. There you go, saying it continues to benefit from the mega trend of digital transformation. However, shares are lower. Watch out, folks. If this starts out, I mean, that's, you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, no, ordinarily, I shouldn't say you should not, okay? Look at this, look at this volatility. Let's see what we did here on a one minute. Yeah, <laughs> crazy action on some of these stocks. Now, this is a slight, a lightly traded stock, folks, okay? Box, you're only talking about 100,000 shares every minute. Not a lot of action. You can see the swings that you get. Anytime you're trading in equity, you want to make sure it's liquid. Not quite liquid, folks. You see the moves you can have. You're talking about a $2 move down and up when you can basically move this stock for 80,000 to 100,000 shares of an equity. Not a lot. You jump over to the Analyze tab. See what kind of market cap we're dealing with, because it's going to be a small one if we're dealing with that type of action. Yeah, 3.8 billion, nothing to shake your head at, but uh, going to open basically down 3.6%. And what I was going to say was, you're talking about basically a beat on earnings, a beat on revenue, and a raise of its full year revenue guidance. And they're going to continue to benefit, and the market's like, guess what? We wanted more. We wanted more. Autodesk. Maybe uh, the car craze is over. Look at that down 9.7 percent we'll take a look at that carvana not paying a penalty though so that's going to be an industry industry uh in a specific one for autodesk we'll take a look at those cars stocks when we get back stay tuned folks are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. You have the Dow up 62 points right now. You got Salesforce extending the gain, putting a little bit of a bid. You got Salesforce up 11 points right now, up 4.3%. S&P is negative by three. Jumping back to some of the car companies. So Carvana, uh, CVNA is their symbol, excuse me. Uh, a little bit lower, down about seven tenths percent. Now, what I, the reason why I pulled this up is because Autodesk, e, e, whoops, let me pull that had their numbers, ADSK is their symbol last night. You're down 7.8%. Now jumping over to their numbers here, uh, quarterly revenue was merely in line with estimates and its current quarter earnings guidance disappointed investors. Not what you want to see. They beat estimates by eight cents for the latest quarter, but you're talking about earnings guidance disappointing. Uh, see where that car sector goes. Might have seen the peak there. Um, and I think I'm being a little bit kind saying might have seen the peak there in that used car frenzy. Pure storage. This is a company accelerating higher pre-market. Tripled the five cents estimate. Now, come on, five cents, they go to 15 cents. You make 10 cents extra. Nonetheless, it's a profit. It's a beat. Quarterly earnings of 14 cents a share. Revenue topped projections as subscription revenue rose 31% from a year ago. PSTG is their symbol. Now, let's jump in. There's a pop for you. Up 18% on the open. Now, they are a data platform focused on delivering software-defined all-flash solutions, fast and cloud-capable for customers, enabling customers to put data to work for their businesses. Um, replaces storage systems designed from mechanical disk with an all-flash system. That's a growing industry. Don't got to tell you that. It's popping on the open up 18% right now at 24 bucks. You take a look at this thing on a longer term basis. You see the run it had up to 29 about uh, six months ago. You back down the volatility on some of these stocks to 17. We're trading at 25 right now. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're trading with the uh, NASDAQ 100 barely in the red so far. We got Amazon up about one tenth percent on the open. We got Facebook down about one tenth percent. Google shares down about one tenth percent Google has been quite the stock in a big way folks uh, don't have to tell you that I go back a year to the lows we had in September 1406 we're more than double the share price that's a 100 percent bagger just in the last uh, year call it 11 months uh, remarkable action we're still right, right within that trend channel that we're talking about on Google to higher prices you jump around to Microsoft, been quite a rocket ship as well recently. You make an all-time high of 305.84 recently. We're trading at 301.91 right now. That thing, talk about a move in the last week. You trade from a price point of last Thursday of 288. We're trading at 302 right now on Microsoft. Let's take a look at Tesla shares. Tesla up about a third of a percent at 713 so far this morning. I'll take a look at some of my favorite stocks out there. You got Disney.
Disney, just in a consolidation really since about May between about 170 and 180 ish. We're trading at 178.46 on Disney. Uber's been seeing some pain recently, catching a little bit of a pop over the last few days. Uber down to a low of 38.84, it says there on the open, but you back things up. Folks, I was talking about it on my show, all right? Now, there's a lot of risks to buy in the equity Uber. Uh, one of the risks I don't see, though, is them having too much trouble, at least in America, okay, with their workers having to be categorized as employees versus contractors on a national level. I just don't see it happening. If it makes its way to the Supreme Court, I don't see this court saying that they are going to overrule the voters in some of the more liberal states in the union, like California, that those voters voting to say, listen, we qualify those workers as gig workers. Now, you can't just vote against somebody's rights, okay, and take them down. That's the whole point of the Constitution. That's the whole point of the Supreme Court. You can't pass laws, even if they're passed by a majority of the people, that go against somebody's constitutional rights. Nonetheless, I don't see this one being that big of a factor uh, when many reasonable people make the argument that that's the nature of the business. I mean, Uber is literally putting a fare up for grabs on their network. I mean, I can't understand it, folks. Give us a call. I'd love to have the conversation. 877-927-6648. There's reasonable arguments on both sides of this, okay, because the livable wage argument's a big deal. You got companies like Uber that are just making Boku bucks. You're talking about a company valued right now of $78 billion, right? And the argument is that they're not providing a livable wage for their workers. It's a tough one there, folks, all right? But the bottom line is they're putting a wage up um, they're putting a contract up with the way that they would probably like to classify it. And I'm biased. We have Uber in my share, in my newsletter, okay? Um, but they're putting, as a, as a consumer, you know, I, I fight for livable wages, folks, but you can't just change the system and how it works for that, okay? You can pass further regulations that might assist in how contract employees might be able to benefit from the societal shift to gig workers, which is happening, but you can't just make companies apply everybody as a worker when in reality they are literally putting up a contract to drive somebody from point A to point B. Um, if you're a worker out there and you're a contractor and you drive cars, you can take that one little gig, you can do it, you can do it whenever you want, you can do it for Uber, you can do it for Lyft simultaneously. Um, that's the true definition of a contracted worker. Nonetheless, you see the point being, you dive lower on the news that have federal judge in California had overruled and said it was unconstitutional California voters, the market shook that off quickly, folks, as it should have. I remember talking about it on my show at about 9 o'clock when this thing was trading at 38, and by 12 or 1 o'clock, you were back in positive territory for that equity, pushing higher. But man, this could be a dead cap bounce, folks, all right? We're back to a 50%. I talked about it in, this, in my newsletter as well. You're looking to get some Uber. This could be a nice spot. We've popped a little bit, but you always like to see, number one, we got a 50% retracement. We're right at that level is where you bounce from the lows we had at 13 bucks to 64. And what's also nice here is that you're coming right into an area that was resistance, and it looks like this area could be turning into an area of support. You might want to see it a little bit further, test that area, but you're talking about the highs we had 14 months ago in June. You're talking about this little consolidation area we had about a year ago from September through October before we really accelerated higher on the vaccine efficacy news. But well, folks, consider it. You're back to a price level of almost before we knew about the vaccine efficacy. When we were living in a world where we were just hoping for 60, maybe 70% vaccine efficacy to get over this. Um, now, things have changed. Uh, that vaccine, of course, doing an outstanding job. I encourage everybody to get out there and get out of it. We're dealing, get, we're dealing with some tough cases here in Florida, folks, in a big way. Um, but nonetheless, we're back to some pretty attractive prices from 64 bucks back to about 40 bucks in Uber. Something to keep your eye on there. Excuse me, folks. A little bit of a dry cough today. s and is down three points. Jumping down the line to see what else we got going on. For articles, I got teed up about what's going on today. Uh, let's see, what else we got going on? What do we got? Yeah, that's the Pentagon. We don't need to talk about that. Talking about vaccines. Uh, how about the NFL? Here we go. Uh, broadcasters face crucial $105 billion stress test as new season kicks off. They signed quite a deal, folks, with um, the big TV networks. You're talking about $105 billion as they come into a new season. Now, I have my fantasy draft going on tonight. The season kicks off September 9th. Um, last year, NFL regular season viewership fell 7%, marking the first drop in three years. But it was hard to tell if fewer people watched because of declining interest in the sport or due to COVID-related disruptions. Last year was a weird year. Um, 
just didn't feel normal. Watching some of the sports games just didn't feel normal with no, no fans in the, in, the, in, the, in the seats and all of that. But the NFL signed quite a deal, $105 billion. We'll talk about a little bit more about this when we get back as the NFL season kicks off. Can't wait for that September 9th with the defending champs, Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'll still always be a Patriots fan. Can't do me wrong there. But I uh, got to love having Tom Brady in town to defend another title for Tampa Bay as the GOAT, the greatest of all time, Tom Brady. Speaking of greatest of all time, folks, we got S&Ps right near all-time highs. We got all the markets near all-time highs. Russell, a little bit lagging. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets pretty much sitting right where we kicked off the program. I talked about we got a pretty tight trading range. We might see a tight trading range today. Uh, hard to imagine we get a real dramatic move ahead of Chairman Powell coming up tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 24 hours to go until we get the chairman speaking himself. We'll get a lot of Fed speak out there today. You saw the type of little action we can get, whether it was 8.30, we got some action from the Fed's Bullard speaking, jumping over to what he had to say real quick as we wrap things up. Uh, excuse me on the front and there it is 
The Fed need, has to get going on the taper, may need to get aggressive to stop inflation. And as Kevin Hanks referenced when we were speaking to him at 915, not surprising to hear uh, Chairman, uh, not Chairman, uh, St. Louis Fed President James Bullard say that the central bank should have its tapering process, process start maybe earlier than you've heard from Chairman Powell. But he wants the process finished by the end of March of 2022. Again, I don't think you'll hear Chairman Powell saying those words tomorrow morning. Nonetheless, interesting as you see it. Uh, Delta out there yesterday. Some interesting action with Delta. You're going to see this happen in a lot, folks. Private companies, they're not in the business of paying for people not to get vaccinated to pay for their hospital stays when you got a choice out there to take a vaccine that is safe and effective. Effective. They're going to be charging 200 bucks a pop for their employees that choose to be unvaccinated as part of their health care plan. Um, you get into the numbers, and they have the numbers already, folks. The fee for unvaccinated employees is to address the financial risk from their decision the average hospital stay for COVID-19 patients has cost Delta $50,000 a pop uh, that's not how jobs get created folks so good to see a company like that protecting their own bottom line protecting their employees um, it's the bottom line how it works out Delta up a bar we'll call it flat but they've been quite a little pop now you take a look at these equities folks Delta you're bouncing off the 618 of the full run that it had up to 52 bucks back from 37. Another one to keep your eye on, folks. We've tried to get into these in my newsletter, Boeing. Um, you could keep your eye on this trend channel. You take Boeing, you put it on a weekly, you line up where we are from the lows, pretty defined channel line, and Boeing bouncing a little bit off the bottom there at 221, maybe finding a little bit of an acceleration higher. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. Starting your day with me. Stay tuned. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up live next. Fast Market coming up at 11. You heard them. They're going to be talking about Peloton as one of the companies that they'll be featuring. We got our man, Larry Pesavento, live at noon. Steve Rhodes at 1 o'clock. Dave White at 2. Tom O'Brien, my dad, live at 3. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. We'll be right back.